Hello, today I'm going over the new fuel system in this CRX here, which will eventually be a turbocharged all-wheel drive track car. I've been using it in autocross with a naturally aspirated B20 for a couple of years now. What I've done so far is build a VTEC B-series engine with forged internals, titanium valve train, uh, the works. The link to that build will be in the description. This engine is capable of 500 horsepower with a turbo, but until now it didn't have a fuel system that could support it. The original engine in a CRX SI is a 1.6 liter single cam that made 106 horsepower on a good day. So that fuel system cannot even begin to keep up with this new engine under boost. Previously, I removed the factory fuel system completely. Gas tank and fuel pump were gone, fuel rail and injectors have already been upgraded. And most dramatically, I cut out the trunk floor where the spare tire should go and welded in a new higher floor to leave space under the car for a rear differential. The link to that video will also be in the description. So what are the requirements of this new fuel system? Well, number one, flow. It has to provide a lot more fuel and be adjustable to give me complete flexibility with boost levels when I'm tuning the car. The engine is capable and built for 500 horsepower, but I will probably run lower boost with a target of close, closer to 300 horsepower until the car is all wheel drive so I can actually control it. Uh, second, E85. Every part has to be compatible with E85 in case I choose to run that in the future. Space. I have to leave space under the car so that I can place all-wheel drive components like a rear differential, a drive shaft without getting in the way. So that's why everything is going to be trunk mounted. Surge tank. It has to include a surge tank setup that guarantees that I won't be fuel starved when I'm in the corners, sloshing fuel around the fuel cell. Uh, this is a race car, so I have to keep that in mind. Uh, it's not just going to be about daily driving. So in this build, I went through several iterations. I bought several different fuel pumps. Uh, you'll see I have another video about buying fake Bosch fuel pumps. That was a mistake I made along the way. Uh, different fuel filters and I went through all kinds of different AN connectors before I had everything right. Uh, the main point of this video is to give you all those details up front so if you want to build something similar you'll have the exact parts list without all the trial and error. Uh, so let's walk through the build and keep in mind links to everything diagrams will be in the description below. So let's start in the back. It is a fuel cell system and it's all above the floor line because this is going to eventually have all wheel drive so I needed space below the car. So the fuel tank is out. This fuel cell is in. It is a cheap eBay fuel cell that I'm going to replace with an FIA rated bladder one which is the first lesson I learned uh, about fuel cells but it does work and it doesn't change how the rest of the system is going to work. The fuel cell has an out that goes into an AEM fuel pump and then it goes into the first fuel lab fuel filter that's 75 microns and then it goes into the surge tank the surge tank of course is so that I always have fuel even when I'm hitting those six G's and round the corners this thing stays full while fuel sloshes around in here so it goes into there here's the second AEM fuel pump it's the same model then it goes out into a 10 micron fuel lab fuel filter where it goes off to the front of the car. All of the all of these fuel lines are 8 AM going to the engine. Here it comes and goes up to the front directly into the AEM fuel rail into the Bosch 1000 cc fuel injectors and then here's the return. There's no fuel pressure regulator here like on stock. I have that plugged and then here it goes to adjustable aeromotive fuel pressure regulator. Again, the return is 6AN, and this return going back is also 6AN. There's a dirt bike going by, so I'm going to pause. Okay, and then the fuel line goes back to the return. Again, 6AN return, 6AN return into the fuel cell, or into the surge tank, and then this overflow returns back into the surge tank. So this is return into the fuel cell. This is the return. This is the out. This is actually not a PTFE hose like all of this is. This is all PTFE so I can run E85. This is just a rubber hose because no fuel goes through here. This is just the uh, vent so that no pressure builds up or vacuum builds up. And then this loop is so that when I uh, flip over and uh, die, I don't uh, spill all the gas out. Each fuel pump is on its own relay. I'll have that included in the wiring diagram. The signal for the relay are 
the the positive is the standard uh, location is wired to the standard location of the fuel pump so it's just the regular factory signal and the ground for the relay is a switch up in the dash so I can cut the fuel pumps off when I flip on the racetrack. Um, that's the gist of it. Other lessons I learned is not to use the spray can uh, truck bed liner because this <laughs> melts when you spill gas it melts. I'll be when I when I replace this with an FIA rated fuel cell that will get done in Raptor. Uh, truck bed liner. Also fuel cells are louder than fuel pumps are louder than I expected. That's why all of this and this cover is sound deadened. I did run all the fuel lines through the car which some people will say is crazy and stupid but that is also the factory location of the fuel lines on all these Hondas and if I die in a fiery explosion then you can make fun of me and tell me I was wrong. But do that at your own risk. It's not my problem. I'm just here to talk about the connections and the parts. You install them in whatever order you think is best for you. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned where we actually start putting turbo, a turbo inside, coming soon.